Hello, welcome to screencast number two. This is the second in a series of four of these screencasts I'm doing on uh, taking limits using algebra. And so this one is not exactly a rational function, it's a fraction, uh, but the bottom part's got a square root in it. And so it uh, might be a little bit different than what we saw in part one where it was just a straight up rational function. Uh, as always, let's try to evaluate this limit by first directly substituting and to see what we get. So if I put t equals 4 in, I have 4 minus 4 over 2 minus square root of 4. And that, again, as is kind of a theme here, is 0 over 0. And remember, this tells us no information about the limit. Uh, we don't know at this point, just because I get 0 over 0, that the limit exists. I don't know if it fails to exist. I don't know what it is or whether it exists or not. So I need to do a little more algebra or something to uh, find out what the limit is, if it is anything at all. So let's... Uh, start on doing that. Now uh, there's no factoring or no really obvious factoring that I can do uh, to uh, any of these things because these aren't polynomials. I mean this one's not a polynomial I should say. 2 minus radical t. So I need to do some algebra here but it's going to be a little trickier algebra than we have seen. So let's see what the uh, trick is. Alright so I'm going to take the limit as t approaches 4. What I'm going to do here is uh, kind of a familiar trick in some ways but uh, with a little bit of a twist. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by something, by the same thing. Uh, now, you know when you multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by some non-zero uh, object, well, as long as it's the same thing multiplied to top and the bottom, it's okay. You're really just changing the appearance of the fraction more than anything else. Now, what I'm going to do here is multiply the top and bottom by, you know, you see 2 minus t here. I'm going to multiply by 2 plus radical t, 2 minus radical t. I'm going to multiply by 2 plus radical t. Now, why in the world did I do that? Well, let's find out. Let's carry out the multiplication that I just introduced. I don't want to uh, cancel these out straight away because that would just undo my, my step. So I'm going to multiply out what I have on the bottom. The top part I'm going to leave as it is, 4 minus t, 2 plus radical t. But check out what happens on the bottom, and this maybe explains why I chose this uh, this thing to multiply by. If I foil this out, I get two. I get four. <clears throat> Outer is plus two radical t. Inner is minus two radical t. And last is minus radical t times radical t. Uh, that just gives me t. And so what you see here is that I can cancel these guys out, and I'm left with. Uh, the limit, this is equal to, the limit as t goes to 4 of 4 minus t, still leaving this in its unmultiplied state up here, times 2 plus square root of t over 4 minus t. Now isn't that convenient? I just introduced a common factor of 4 minus t on the top and the bottom so I can cancel those out. And what I'm left with is something a lot simpler, so simple in fact that I wonder if I can just directly substitute. In fact, I sure can. This is just going to be 2 plus radical 4, which is, uh, of course, 2 plus 2, which is 4. So my answer here is 4. All right, so uh, how did I know to multiply by this? Well, the, the problem, as it was in the beginning here, was the square root thing here. So what I'm going to do is multiply by what we call its conjugate. Okay, This thing, uh, 2 plus radical t, is what's called the conjugate. Conjugate of 2 minus radical t. That's this. It's the same expression, just with the sign changed here in the middle from minus to plus. And the effect of doing that is when I multiply on the bottom now, I have basically a difference of two perfect squares. Uh, I'm gonna, when I do the FOIL method, I come up with something uh, in the end where there are no radical signs whatsoever. And getting rid of the radical sign kind of simplifies the expression quite a bit, and then I can simplify some more by factoring. So uh, that's, a, that's an algebra trick, and if you run across a, a limit where you're supposed to do this with algebra and you see square roots or a difference or a sum of something and a square root, uh, you might want to keep that in the back of your mind as a tool or as a trick that you can employ uh, to simplify the fraction and then take the limit using direct substitution. Good luck.